Hello and welcome everybody to 1976. And in 1976, there was a big deal here in the United States called the Bicentennial Celebration. It was a 200 years of the United States being an independent country. Yay, 200 years, that's not much time at all, but big celebration. My grandfather was very patriotic. He was a World War II vet. He was in the Navy, U.S. Navy. And I thought I'd break from the usual and tell a little war story. Are you ready for a war story? All right, buckle up, everybody. Here we go. South Pacific, my grandfather, Navy, ship. They gave, they gave him a special assignment. He was to set up, set up a little, I can't remember if it was like listening or repeater. I don't, he was setting up some sort of radio equipment on this little, he describes it as like a one, one palm tree island. He says not literally, but he could take cover in like the thicket and that was it. Just a little thicket and island, nothing else. And so a naval ship dropped him off at night and said, we'll be back tomorrow. And so he was there all night doing his thing and he waited the next day. The ship didn't come back. They only gave him one day's worth of food. And so he's running low on foods. Like I better ration this. And so like the second day comes along, the ship comes back, like in broad daylight, picks him up. And he's like, that little boat, I forgot what he called it, a skiffer. I remember what he called it. But the little boat that comes off of the big ship to pick him up, he's like, it felt like it took forever for them to come out. There's like, they were rowing by hand, not literally, but he says it felt like they were just took forever to get to him. And then he finally's like, yes, thank you for picking me up. Got him back on the ship and sailed off. That was the most exciting story of his, do you want to know what he did? He was a radar tech which at the time was top secret, right, radar. Remember how I said my family is from, I'm from a family of engineers? Yeah, stuff like that. Those are our war stories. It's like, you, dude, you were on Tropical Island all by yourself for two days. That must have been terrible. <laughs> but needless to say, he was scary. It was World War II. So, back to golf, just like that. Did you like my segue there? Back to golf, let's go have a closer look at this first ever metal wood at the review table. You can see on the sole, it says pin seeker on the heel side of the aft portion of the sole. And as we move towards the toe, it says bombshell with the number. So in this case, three, like a three iron, three wood, not entirely sure. And then there's this large semicircle here in the middle, which is, does not feel metallic. I'm not sure, but it doesn't feel metallic. So a little cut out down here. As we spin around, you can see the face. The face ha does have some roll and bulge. It's not perfectly flat. I'm not sure if that's gonna show up on camera. And then we have these three grooves on the crown. These are, they feel metallic. So my guess is that is metallic. So metal most of the way around. There's some offset here. We can spin around the skirt, you can see. It looks like a hybrid with kind of some sharper edges here towards the face. On the hosel, USA and patent pending. No ferrule, ferrulous design. We move up the stepped shaft to a pin seeker branded true temper shaft. So this is pin seeker. You can see TT true temper down here, made in the USA. Here's the registration number on the sticker with the regular flex, 1976. I just put this on here to remind me. And then we have a victory style grip. It's a sure tack tour. Sure tack tour grip. Well, let's get this vintage beauty out on the range and see if I can make some sort of contact with this interesting club. On the range, this looks dangerous. It has a sharp edge, you know, and then you're just like, it's gonna dig, it's gonna break my wrist, I don't wanna hit this, and then you hit it and it doesn't feel bad. It feels like a modern club. There would be circumstances where I would want some bounce and some forgiveness on this leading edge. Yes, do I like the look of this sharp top edge? Not really. Kind of, you know, forgiveness, 
we want that to look a little bit more friendly. However, once I when, when you connect with the ball, it feels really good. Really good. I can see why these took off. However, it's interesting that this is the first metal wood head ever. 1976, it predates the tailor-made Pittsburgh persimmon by a few years. Yes, it's not a driver, and maybe that's the biggest fault with it. But this, usually history remembers. You look back in history and usually you remember the firsts. The first of this, the first of that. But this is often forgotten. The Pin Seeker bombshell, the original. First ever metal wood. It's just kind of like, oh, tailor-made, yay, tailor-made. Because tailor-made's around these days and they still are very prolific. And I think that's when that influences history. But I like this club. I want to keep this club. This is a first. In, we're exploring materials. First metal wood head ever. Whether it be steel, titanium, whatever. So I'm really happy with this. I like it. It feels good. Would I put it in a bag? No. Would you put this in a bag? Let me know your thoughts about everything I talked about. Yeah, we can talk about firsts that have been forgotten. Any golf clubs, like any requests for any of those clubs, let me know in the comments below. What do you think of the Pin Seeker? Did you game it? Did you own one? Do you buy, did you buy one when they were new? Did you think TaylorMade made the first metal wood? Is there one that I totally missed? This is my understanding, the first metal wood ever from 1976. As usual, huge shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. You can also support this channel by visiting my Amazon shop. I'll put a link in the description below. I am an Amazon associate. I make proceeds from qualifying purchases. Thank you so much for watching. I am the Vintage Golfer.